Please welcome President of Google Cloud International and Head of Google Island, Adair Fox Martin. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Google Cloud Next. I'm delighted to have all of you here with us today. And to the tens of thousands joining us virtually from across the region, thank you so much for tuning in. And for those of you here in Munich, it's been three years, three whole years since we've had the chance to connect face to face at a next event. And we have a lot to catch up on. I'd like to take a moment, if I could, to thank all of our partners who've helped to make this event possible. Special thanks to our Lumary sponsors, Accenture, Atos, C3AI, and Deloitte. Indeed, Google Cloud could not do what we do for our customers without the continuing and ongoing support of our partners. And I can't actually think of a more fitting location to bring us all back together. I had the pleasure of living here in Germany for nearly five years, and it's truly synonymous with technology. As a case in point, right here in Munich, it's home to the largest technology museum in the world. But it isn't called the Technology Museum. It's simply called the German Museum. Technology is already applied. And today, we'll be looking at the transformative power of cloud technology and how it can help drive your organization's transformation forward. This is what today is all about, your transformation and how Google helps. And from the main stage and in our breakout sessions, you'll hear directly from our customers about both the value and the experience they are driving via their transformation with Google Cloud. You'll hear how they're solving some of the most critical business problems and also taking on some of the world's most formidable challenges today, tomorrow, and long into the future. So let's get started. To set the stage, let's connect with our very first customers. In the past few years, Renault Alliance and SEB have both aggressively been pursuing transformation strategies. And for both organizations, cloud technology sits at the very core of their transformations. To share more about this bold course of action, please join me in welcoming two leaders, Renault Alliance's Vice President of IT Services, Stefan Van Uck, and Petra Uhland, Head of Tech and the Group Executive Committee member from SEB. Please join me in welcoming to the stage. Great to have you. Hi. Thank you, Stefan. Please take a seat. Great to have you. So thank you so much for being with us. Maybe we start off by helping the audience here to understand a little bit about the vision for transformation that you have in your company. Stefan, let's, let's start with you and the Renault story. Okay, thank you. Uh, Renault Group CIO has a strategic vision, in fact, to pivot from a company with 124 years of history in making vehicles mm -hmm. to a tech company. We want to move from a car manufacturer to a provider of mobility services. Mm -hmm. When we say transformation, we mean transformation across all areas of the business. Uh, first, a new approach to our product. Renault Group is completely changing what is delivered to its customer. From offering just vehicle, we are moving to offering mobility services. Our vision is that 20% of our revenue will come from services by 2030. This means a new approach to product development to deliver electrify, connected, and software-defined vehicles by 2025. Second, we are changing the, the company's business operating model. All operations will be cloud-based, data-driven, and AI-enabled. We need to gain in agility and scalability, improve security, and at the same time, conti continuously provide new services. Uh, the cloud delivers the best platform for us to drive these opportunities. Oh, we, I definitely agree about the cloud being the best platform for you. What about you, um, Petra? Tell us a little bit about SEB's ambitions and vision to transform. Yeah, SEB was formed 165 years ago, so this will definitely not be our first transformation. We are a wholesale bank, but we're also one of the largest IT organizations in the Nordics. 
Banking today is about IT and data. That's where we meet our customers' expectations with new innovative services. And we believe traditional banks, with our key asset in people and funds, can use the cloud in very powerful ways to be the best banks of tomorrow. Digital transformation is critical to our ability to succeed with these business goals. And from a technology standpoint, we have a set vision to be cloud native by 2030. Having said that, it's important for us to acknowledge that we must execute both the new and the proven technologies that we operate at the same time. Feet on the ground, head in the cloud is one of our mantras. So we start with selected business-driven use cases in areas like data and analytics to achieve this balance. Additionally, technology partners like Google Cloud enable us to develop and manage digital and data security and cyber defense with confidence. And this has never been as important as in the current geopolitical and economic context. And in our view, doing this in the cloud is the only way forward. Yeah, so it seems that business and digital transformation are synonymous at SEB. Um, Stefan, how does Google support Renault's ambitions in, in that regard? Well, Google is a critical part of our digital transformation. Uh, we are working on the end-to-end -end process from a car design to its launch through uh, the manufacturing, quality check, supply chain management, and delivery to the dealers. Uh, the car usage will be then monitored, analyzed using our car data platform for a better understanding of our customers. Renault has also connected over 30 manufacturing plants uh, and the associated uh, supply chain to the Google Cloud platform in order to collect data. We are switching to data-driven manufacturing and supply chain models. The data collection using AI enable us to optimize our energy consumption and improve efficiency through predictive maintenance. This is also support our sustainability program, which is a huge part of our transformation objective. We are also addressing the new B2C channel by connecting cars to GCP using the unique analytic capability of the platform. It is an opportunity for us to better know our users and customers. We can offer them the best possible experience, customized features and new services and provide pay-as-you-go mobility services. Any company undergoing a shift uh, of this magnitude has to trust the security of the platform they are choosing. Uh, we trust Google Secure Infrastructure uh, and are confident that you will also uh, have to great a solution for us to comply with the French digital sovereignty requirement, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, our first strategy was multi-cloud, then we switched to uh, a GCP first. Uh, beyond trust, Renault Group chose Google as a partner for multiple reasons. Uh, Google Cloud is offering the best value for money. Uh, Google Cloud is offering true cloud flexibility and ability to respond to short and long-term challenges. Uh, and cloud, uh, the Google Cloud data is the best value proposal on today's market. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the Google teams are very skilled and very supportive to any of our challenge. Oh, thank you so much, Stefan, for some of your kind remarks there. Um, Petra, how are you at SEB working with Google on the other digital transformation efforts that you have in the company? Yeah, when we started our journey to become cloud native, we evaluated many options. And while we set on a multi-cloud strategy, Google Cloud has supplied all the functionality we've needed so far. But more than that, their true partnership in helping us solve challenging problems through an integrated approach of collaboration, technology, and training has really been an asset for us. And in a highly regulated industry, building trust is a foundation for personalized services. It's enabled by technology for security, know your customer, and compliance. And with our new data platform, we'll be able to use current and historical data in a more intelligent way and speed up the creation of new innovative solutions for our customers. Being able to automate more and spend less time managing infrastructure allows us to focus on developing those new solutions like embedded banking and self-service digital banking. SEB is actively supporting sustainable transition, and that is by offering advisory services, innovative and sustainable financing, and investment products. And we support our customers in their transitions to the Paris Agreement for Climate Change. So our role is very much to enable companies and individuals to make choices that contribute to sustainable society. So with our updated sustainability strategy, we raise our ambition level further and take the next step in accelerating the sustainability transition. And Google's track record and ambition and credibility is inspirational. Thank you. Our experience of working with Google is that Google combines both the stability 
reliability and responsibility of a major enterprise. And also the speed, innovation and flexibility of a startup. <laughs> thank you for that. And thank you to both of you for taking the time to come today and share your ins insights with us. I think the stories that you've shared present a great backdrop for some of the discussions that will come today. And certainly at Google Cloud, we look forward to continuing our partnership with you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please join me in a big thanks for Stefan and Petra. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Now, as Stefan and Petra shared, working with Google is more than about achieving consistency and convenience. It's about helping organizations right across EMEA on their journey of sustainable change. And to provide some additional context about transformation and how it's so underpinned by cloud technology, I'd like to hand it over now to our CEO of Google Cloud, Thomas Corian. Thank you, Adair. I'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to our customers and partners we're really delighted to have you all with us. To echo Adair, across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, now more than ever, cloud is essential for digital transformation. A lot of cloud work to date has been focused solely on cost optimization, reducing cost by moving technology to the cloud, using collaboration tools, and being more efficient. But as we look forward, Companies and customers want more than just cost optimization. They also want value creation. Cloud has to deliver more value and more innovation to organizations. From understanding your customers better, helping you make your supply chain more resilient, bringing people together to improve not just their productivity, but their creativity and creating seamless interactions across your entire value chain. We're committed at Google Cloud to the digital transformation of all businesses across Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And the continued investments in cloud on Europe's terms to support sovereignty, security, and sustainability. It's inspiring to see how organizations across the region are leading the way in this new era. Vodafone, for instance, has migrated to Google Cloud to drive breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and machine learning that have helped it improve customer loyalty through personalized offers and NPS predictions. Swiss International Airlines is using Google Cloud to optimize plane rotation to better align with booking demand, helping them better accommodate customers and save millions. And HSBC has launched more than 250 live services across its organization to support the experience of over 40 million customers around the world. What sets these organizations apart and what you will hear from many of our customers today is that they have systematically embraced cloud as the foundation for their digital transformation. To share more about this, I'll hand things back to you, Adair. Thank you again for having me, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of Google Cloud Next. Thanks so much, Thomas. The transformation era of cloud is marked by a completely different kind of conversation. The questions from our customers are no longer just about convenience and efficiency. They are about the very core of their businesses. And organizations are asking five key questions. How do we become the best at understanding and using data? How do we ensure we have the best technology infrastructure? How do we know that our data, our systems, and our users are secure? How do we create the best workplace for our people? And how do we collectively create a more sustainable future?
Now, last year, we introduced those questions on behalf of our customer. Today, our customers are going to share how they've answered them with the help of Google Cloud. So for the first two questions, please join me in welcoming Garrett Kazmaier, VP and General Manager of Data and Analytics, right here at Google Cloud. Garrett. Stage for you. All right, thank you there. So how does an organization actually become the best at understanding and using their data? You know, it turns out data is at the heart of digital innovation, and it's really the key to unlocking AI. The challenge is, though, that today data is generated at far greater rates, and the clue is that it's being trapped in the new data silos of different formats, of point solutions, and of closed clouds. But when data is unlocked, it can really improve everything. It can make supply chains smarter. It can help you to build contextualized customer applications. And it can truly improve everybody. I'm talking about all your customers. I'm talking about all your employees. And I'm talking about all your partners. Google is a leader in the analysis of structured and unstructured data. And we are unifying the data ecosystem for you, creating the most open data cloud. And this includes actually all of your data in all of your formats, from all sources, from many clouds. And collectively, it's about enabling all styles of analysis. So here is coming you know, one big announcement exactly in that spirit. Today, we announced the support of unstructured data in BigQuery. With that, you can combine your unstructured data with your structured data from your operational databases and SaaS applications. And with that, basically, BigQuery becomes the point for which you can connect all of this data with our machine learning platform, all through the simple and familiar SQL interface of BigQuery. A very interesting statistic is that 90% of our customers, they are analyzing data also from other clouds. Now, with BigQuery Omni, you can access data in Azure and in AWS, but without even moving that data. That makes it simple, and it saves you egress fees. Now, we brought all of this data together, right? So what comes next? Well, you want to uni unify query that in a simple way. Well, today we're going to announce the integration of Spark into BigQuery's open query engine. And with that, you get a single interface for both SQL and Apache Spark right in BigQuery. And I can imagine what most of you are thinking right now if you're onto data like I am. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about data lakes for a second. BigQuery does support key file formats for which you can build data lakes and lake houses through the announcement that we made recently called Big Lake. And today we are announcing the support of Apache Iceberg and the upcoming support of the popular formats Hootie and Delta. Now, after we connected all of this data together, well, let's connect it to all of you. Let's connect all of this data to people. And the first stop is business intelligence. In the business intelligence space, let's be honest, we actually have two sets of data. On the one side, there is centralized, highly governed, and well-managed data. It's used for standardized reports and dashboards. And on the other side, well, we have that not so much official data. It's often distributed and it's many times used for self-service dashboarding, right? Google has products for both of these worlds. First, we have Looker. It is the leading product for governed data access. It has strong business semantics, and it's really the foundation for data-driven application building. And we have Google Cloud Data Studio. It's one of the most popular tools for self-service data visualizations and discovery. If you combine them together today, they have more than 10 million users a month. And today, we announced that we are unifying these two products into a single offering called Looker and Looker Studio. And with that, actually, we're going to unify self-service BI with trusted data. We are also announcing Looker Studio Pro. Looker Studio Pro is an enhancement of that with additional support and management capabilities. And well, you know, with obviously, you know, you would think now, this is a Google-only story, but I talked about being committed to an open data cloud, right? So we are also working with all of the leading BI vendors. We are already working with Tableau, but today 
we are announcing the brief of Looker support for Microsoft Power BI. So let's move on from BI to AI. Last year, we have announced Vertex AI, our machine learning platform, and that requires 80% less code than other comparable platforms to train machine learning models. But the reality is that today, most of the data is actually video data. And it has been really, really hard to get meaningful insights out of video streams. So today, I am very excited to announce Vertex AI Vision. It is an end-to-end, -end fully managed development platform for Vision AI applications. It allows you to easily ingest, analyze, and store video stream data and it comes with pre-drained machine learning models for common actions. And it takes down development times from days down to minutes. Now this is time to value. An open data cloud must also enable a connected ecosystem from SaaS applications to all of the technology partners out there, many here in the audience, I assume. And our data cloud makes it much, much simpler to access data from all of these SaaS applications out there. I'm talking about ServiceNow, Workday, SAP, Adobe, and many more. With SAP, actually, we have created predefined integration points. You have models in BigQuery and out-of-the-box reports. And in the latest version of it, it just takes seven minutes to get deployed. One customer who is taking advantage of that today is Carrefour, and they have reduced both their operating expenses and their energy consumption by moving their data-centric SAP architecture to the cloud. And now, with our data technology, they are getting insights and take actions in real time on both supply chain management and inventory logistics. We also have 800 technology partners who are building their products on top of Google Cloud today. And 17 of the most influential data companies in the cloud have joined us in the Data Cloud Alliance program. It is a program with the commitment to open standards and interoperability. We also expanded our partnerships with Colibra, Palantir, Elastic, MongoDB, ServiceNow, and many more. Because the bottom line of all of this is, you need an open data cloud. And with all of these announcements today, we are taking a major step forward in making this a reality for all of you. Now, obviously, I can talk about data with you the entire day, but we have to move on to the second question and talk about how do you get the best possible infrastructure. And for us, you know, for me, being an engineer myself, great infrastructure means that you can innovate and build really, really quickly. The challenge is, though, that yesterday's infrastructure slows down development. It makes innovating really, really hard. And the reason is quite simple. It's complexity. It's tough to build quickly, you know, when you have to select from thousands of options, when you have to stitch together infrastructure all the time. And at the same point in time, think about, you know, the poor developer, you know, managing costs and keeping applications safe. The good news is, though, there is a better way. Tomorrow's cloud creates simplicity through what we call golden paths. Now, golden paths are prescriptive architectures and an opinionated development model. And the point is that they reduce complexity right from the IDE when you deploy it through production. And here is a fantastic example of a golden path. Today, we are launching Software Delivery Shield. And that is a fully managed end-to-end -end software supply chain security model right from your source code into deployment. It has four key components. First, a cloud workstation to develop. Second, an assured open source software service that we are validating and securing. Third, cloud build our continuous integration service and GKE, our, manage, our security management dashboard, all coming together in software delivery shield. Another great example of golden paths is our workload-optimized infrastructure that we are building at Google right from the Silicon app. And I'm going to talk about three quick examples here. And we start, obviously, with the most important one, AI-optimized infrastructure. Google has developed the Tensor Processing Units, or the TPUs, 
And the point was we wanted to massively increase hardware performance for AI, right? Today, we are announcing the general availability of TPU version 4. They are even faster and they are more effective. And the whole point of TPU version 4 is that you can run really large machine learning models in your companies for your next breakthrough innovation. We are also super pleased and psyched to announce the deeper integration with NVIDIA. Together with NVIDIA, we are committed to using AI workloads and running AI workloads on their latest technology that ranges from GPUs to managed machine learning services in combination with Google AI models. And a great example of that is our joint commitment to open source AI. Not only to bring the ecosystem together, but actually to help all of you to prevent platform and model lock-in. The next stop is our cloud-first workloads. You know, I was talking about developers, and 50% you know, of developers are actually using containers today. And Google contributed a very important format in the container space called Kubernetes, right? Google's Kubernetes engine is a fully managed service. That is already a big deal. But a bigger point is it scales to unprecedented levels. PGS, it's a Norwegian geophysics company, they have tripled their deployment size with us. And they scaled up to, get this, 21 petaflops. Do you, does, does any of you know what that means, 21 petaflops? That means that PGS is now in the top 25 list of the world's supercomputers, just through the powers of Kubernetes and GKE. To run Kubernetes in different environments, we are providing Antos, and Antos basically allows you to run Kubernetes in multi-cloud settings, on-premise or on the edge. And today we are announcing a set of enhancements to make multi-cluster management much simpler by just deploying a single configuration file to hundreds of clusters in different environments. So we also want to stay ahead, help you stay ahead of emerging technologies. And we are working with web free companies, the pioneers in that space. And they're using our workload optimized infrastructure for workloads such as blockchain, for instance. And today we are announcing that Coinbase has selected us as their premier cloud provider and partnering with us to enable the web free community. So these golden paths, they are really our approach to give you the best technology infrastructure. And to talk about the impact of that to their business, I would like to turn it to our great partners and customers from the Deutsche Bank team. Let's roll the video. If you don't have financial stability and you don't know that you can take care of your dear ones, your happiness is impacted. Deutsche Bank is a leading German and European bank that is transforming the industry. We are on a journey with Google Cloud to redefine banking. We are building the foundations and the infrastructure for a compliant, secure experience. We're also enabling all of our clients to really now leverage that to better their life. What really excites me is the huge transformation that we are driving at the bank. We're creating modern solutions and new opportunities. Deutsche Bank's Frontier app is a cash flow and invoice management platform for our clients. It allows them to, in real time, share their invoices with their customers, collect payments from them, automatically send them reminders, overall decrease in time to capture a mandate and accept a payment. We brought that down from weeks to days with 80% in sales efficiencies. One of the biggest benefits of developing this app on Google Cloud is most of the services we needed were just out of the box. So my team could really focus on building the business features. We are able to connect to our clients' ecosystems, becoming a part of their entire business value chain and beyond the traditional boundaries of banking. Some of the key benefits for partnering with Google Cloud is speed, security, and scalability. By having data in one place, you can apply analytics, you can build machine learning solutions. The partnership with Google Cloud allows us, from an innovation point of view, work directly with Google and engineers, sometimes on products and services that are not available in the market already. 
Google Cloud is really at the heart of our transformation that our great team has and are able to implement it efficiently, securely, and at the right velocity, the sky is the limit. So I wanna, I wanna end with this. Men companies are empowered with an intelligent, simple, and open data cloud. The sky is indeed the limit. And with that, I would like to hand it back to Adair. Thanks so much, Gareth. So having the power of an open data cloud and an open infrastructure cloud to drive your transformation isn't meaningful unless you can operate in a trusted environment. And this takes us to our third customer question. How do we know our data, our systems, and our users are secure? Cybersecurity is naturally a top of mind concern for CISOs, and it's increasingly top of mind in the C-suite and in the boardroom. And on one hand, CISOs need to defend against increasingly sophisticated threats and actors. But on the other hand, they're faced with an unprecedented shortage of cybersecurity professionals. So how do we reconcile this? With our solution, we are championing a future of invisible security. In this approach, security is engineered in. Operations are simplified, and we pursue a shared fate together. Our commitment to you is twofold. First, we work to keep you secure from cyber attacks. And to do this, we utilize the expertise that we've developed from securing our own Google business and our own billions of users. Second, we help you to quickly and effectively identify and resolve cyber threats. So what does this look like in action? Using our new Chronicle Security Operation Suite, Morgan Sindel, which is a UK construction and regeneration company, ingests, analyzes, and retains all of its security information, eliminating what was the typical trade-off between cost and security blind spots. Vertiv, a leading provider of equipment and services for data centers, is now analyzing more than 20 times more security data and responding to three times more security events with exactly the same resources. Security queries that used to take hours now take seconds. Our investment in your security is only growing. We've recently completed our acquisition of Mandiant, a leader in dynamic cyber defense. Mandiant is known for being the best in threat intelligence and in incident response. Google Cloud is the best at data and analytics. Now that we're together, we have the latest threat intelligence from the front lines. And we can deliver this automatically through SaaS products backed by the leading managed offerings and consulting services of Mandiant. Jointly, we can deliver on our shared mission of a more secure world. We understand that to fully embrace transformation in the cloud, you not only need security, you also need trust. You need confidence and peace of mind that when you deploy the latest innovations, you can meet your unique requirements for control, transparency, and sovereignty. Whether that's driven by your regulator, by geopolitical considerations, or indeed by the government and its policy. At Google Cloud, we take digital sovereignty seriously. Customers, partners, policymakers, and governments have surfaced three requirements in three very specific areas. The first is data sovereignty, which is keeping control over encryption and access to your data. The second is operational sovereignty. This is keeping visibility and control over the provider operations. And the third is software sovereignty. This is running workloads without a dependence on a provider's software. 
To address these requirements, we launched our initiative, Cloud on Europe's Terms, in September of 2021. To achieve data sovereignty, we offer unique external encryption capabilities, allowing you to store and manage your encryption keys outside of Google Cloud's infrastructure and deny Google access for any reason. To support data residency requirements, we continue to launch cloud regions in EMEA. Just recently, we launched new regions in Qatar, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Greece, adding to our 16 cloud regions here in EMEA. And today, I'm really excited to announce new cloud regions for four more countries, for Austria, for Norway, for Sweden, and South Africa. To support operational sovereignty, we offer an exceptionally strong set of trusted partnerships for stringent local supervision. And to support software sovereignty needs, we offer hosted cloud solutions. Now, these solutions are built on open source foundation, embracing open APIs and services to enable interoperability and, most importantly, survivability. They can run on the customer premises, they can run on partner premises, and they meet the strict needs for disconnected operations. Our unique relationship with T-Systems in Germany here demonstrates how we deliver both the full benefit of the public cloud and confidence in compliance with German regulations. And to discuss this, I'd really like to welcome on stage Adele Al Sayeh, CEO of T Systems. Please join me in welcoming Adele. Hello, dear. Great to have you here, Adele. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, T Systems uh, was Google's Cloud's first digital sovereignty partner in Europe. And as you know, since then we've partnered in France, in Spain, um, and in Italy, and probably more to come. But it started with you. Yes. Um, why do you think this partnership model is so important, not just for Germany, but in Europe and beyond? Well, there, first of all, thank you for having me. It's great to be in a room full of people again. <laughs> Um, you know, sovereignty has been a topic for um, a period of time. This is not a new topic, right? Um, it's driven by multiple factors. Um, geopolitical tensions is driving it, the bifurcation of the world between East and West, the fear of being dependent on somebody and not being able to move uh, is another. The war in Europe that we didn't expect is fueling even more this sovereignty sentiment. Um, and at the core of it, as I said, is fear of dependency, but also fear of not complying with regulatory environments. And you talked about data. Data is a big deal here, right? How do I control my data? How do I make sure I know exactly who is touching it, where is it, etc.? And um, we've seen this opportunity develop over multiple years. Um, and we found this opening where we worked jo jointly with you uh, to develop the engineering solution. Um, and, um, you know, I'm super excited about that because it is a unique way of providing a hyperscaler solution with the sovereign controls that allows companies to digitize, allows them to use the best of the cloud without losing their sovereignty and their worries about controls. All right. And I think, you know, there's an element of trust here. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, both of us appreciate it's so easy to lose trust and so, so hard to win. Yes. And when we look at organizations that want to start or accelerate their journey of digital sovereignty as part of their transformation narrative, there's a lot of questions and a lot of options to navigate. What would your advice to be to this audience about getting started? Well, look, the first thing is um, this solution that we're talking about is real. It's available. Um, we are launching it in phases. Of course, we introduced the sovereign controls and every quarter. Um, we have now uh, multiple customers that are going live that are using this. Um, so it's no longer a theoretical debate or theoretical discussion. So my advice is go for it, right? Take advantage of it. Um, and I believe the regulators in Europe are going to put more and more focus on this area. They're already asking and looking at legislations that would require, of course, first the uh, 
the, the, the mission critical infrastructures to comply with certain security requirements, that is going to be put into law and it will extend beyond the mission critical infrastructures. Um, they're encouraging the companies to assess their environments. They're encouraging the companies to move forward, implementing the solutions in order to address these vulnerabilities, if you will. So my advice is um, give us a call. <laughs> and uh, either Google or T-Systems, and uh, we would be delighted to help you think through it. So as um, our companies perform a risk assessment, you know, often looking at what the regulators have suggested, I think there's a very strong sense that the time to act is now. As you said, this yes. solution is available. And that's because of the upside that is significant. So if I asked you about that upside, what would excite you most about it? Look, there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm super excited about. I'm excited, first of all, about this engineering solution that addresses European concern. Um, this is a unique solution. Um, it doesn't compromise in terms of access to the hyperscaler stacks and all of the exciting technology that you just learned. Um, so I'm excited about bringing it to the market and, and, and showcasing it and bringing customers on it. I'm excited about onboarding our clients. Uh, you know, we're, we're learning as we, as we bring every client on board and, and that makes us stronger. That makes us um, revisit our roadmaps and decide what to prioritize. Um, and Wieland, I'm excited about our co-innovation lab, right? I mean, it, it is a big investment in Munich uh, where we, would, we are building our teams, bringing them together, where the customers actually can come and spend weeks working with the teams and moving their applications into the sovereign cloud. All right. Well, listen, Nadal, thank you for an incredible partnership. Thank you for highlighting some very important issues for us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in, thank in thanking the CEO of T-Systems, Adal al Thank you. Thank you so much. So we are committed to making partnerships like the one we've just discussed with Adal available wherever they're needed by local legislation. They're part of our commitment to deliver the most secure, most trusted cloud to our customers here in this region. We want to help you transform in full confidence that your data, your systems, and your users are secure and compliant. Now, when we think about transformation, it's impossible without people. And we have to ensure that our people are able to work together and they are empowered to drive the change. Over the past three years, we collectively have experienced nothing less than an upheaval in our workplace. Remote and office work have blended and combined into a hybrid workplace. And accommodating this with the right collaboration and productivity tools has become absolutely paramount. So let's look at this question. How do we create the best hybrid workplace for our people? Google Workspace was built to answer that question. Workspace helps people communicate and collaborate to get things done regardless of where they work or how they actually want to work. It is the world's most popular set of productivity tools with over 3 billion users across 8 million companies. And we absolutely continue to deliver innovation with more than 300 new features delivered in the past year alone. Workspace is secure by design, leveraging Google's industry-leading zero-trust architecture. But how does that show up as value for our customers? First, let's look at Just Eat. They run Google Workspace to keep their staff connected and communicating regardless of where they are. And when the lockdown hit, they were able to launch a campaign literally within weeks to provide workers in the UK's National Health Service discounted meals for themselves and for their families. Revolut, a fintech also out of the UK, uses Google Workspace for its teams to collaborate across 26 regions and deliver new banking products at speed. And right here in Germany, Zalando, uses Google Workspace for communication across its rapidly expanding operations. So you can see the momentum very clearly in new, rapidly growing businesses. According to Forbes, 96% 
of companies in their 2021 next billion dollar startups list are Google Workspace customers. And I think it's really important for established traditional businesses to take note because in a study of university students, 75% felt Google Workspace offered a more advanced, seamless way for teams to work together. What's more, this preference actually informs their choice of future employer. 47% said Google Workspace would make a job, offer, a job offer at a future workplace much more appealing. So Google Workspace is by far more than the sum of its parts and its capabilities. It has been designed from the ground up to help organizations thrive in a world of hybrid work. More than any other set of tools, Google Workspace helps create the ultimate workplace for today and I also think for the future. Now, in our final segment today, we move from the future of the workplace to the future of our planet. Many of you here will recall the intensity of the heat this summer, breaking records, triggering droughts, and even threatening food security for many. There's no doubt that climate change is upon us. And today's final question is one that should always be top of mind. How do we collectively create a more sustainable future? Sustainability isn't a nice to have, it's an imperative. In good economic times and in bad, it has to stand at the top of an organization's priorities. But interestingly, we have found that you can have your cake and eat it too. And what I mean by this is that you can become more operationally efficient and more innovative by becoming more sustainable. The secret is smarter data. To discuss this further, let's welcome on stage Stephanie Nioi, Nioiman, the VP of IT Sourcing and Infrastructure at Lufthansa Group, and Neil Kuz, who's the CEO of a Google Cloud partner, Geotab. Please welcome Neil and Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie, Hi. a warm welcome. Thank you so much. So thank you both for joining us. Different companies, but both in the travel and transport sector. So let's begin our discussion by just asking to what extent you agree in your industry that sustainability is a data problem. And Neil, we'll, we'll start with you. Thanks, Adair, and good morning to this really impressive audience here today. Um, let me start by saying that sustainability is at the core of Geotab's purpose. Uh, we are global leaders in IoT and connected vehicles, supporting over 40,000 customers, many Fortune 500 companies in over 150 countries. The data insights that we gather from 3 million connected vehicles and around 100,000 data points processed a second ensures that we have the data intelligence to support customers on their sustainability journey. But here's the real truth about commercial fleets. A large percentage of commercial vehicles cannot yet be electrified. So with that being the case, what can organizations do to be more sustainable? The answer to that challenge is, as you said, data. Mm. First, you use the data insights to make your non-electric fleets more efficient, reducing their carbon footprint. You do this by adding sensors to the vehicles, optimizing the road routes, optimizing the types of vehicles used for a particular job, lowering the fuel consumption and idling, and managing inefficient driver behavior. Second, we're seeing that without data insights, vehicle electrification projects often fail. By applying data insights, you can make the best decisions for electrification. Using the data to understand the usage patterns, such as optimizing for range, where infrastructure is readily available, where and when vehicles can be charged, Using the insights from data, you can decide how much and what part of your fleets can be electrified for maximum benefit. So to summarize, yes, data intelligence must be at the core of your sustainability transition in our industry if you're going to move quickly enough. All right. And what about Lufthansa, Stephanie? How does it contribute to sustainability from a data perspective in the aviation industry? 
to make aviation more sustainable is really a huge challenge, you can imagine so. However, at Lufthansa Group, we have set ourselves very ambitious climate goals and will become a carbon neutral company by 2050. On the way towards that target, we will halve the 2019 net emissions by 2030 already. So as the first airline group in Europe, we are proud that our clear emission reduction path is officially in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. So quite an ambition here. For the aviation industry, a truly hard it is to decarbonize. And this challenge will be managed with three levers mainly the new aircraft, which is currently the main contributor to safe emissions, the deployment of sustainable aviation fuel and operational efficiency on top. And of course, that is a very much data-driven exercise. So at Lufthansa, we have used Google Cloud to create a new cloud-based operations decision support suite, meaning the first Lufthansa subsidiary to use this is Swiss. Mm -hmm. First, they pulled in multiple sources of data regarding their planes, their crews, passengers and schedules. And then they applied AI tools on top, so they are now able to optimize operational decisions with just sub-seconds uh, response. So let's look at just one feature in that platform. It's about rotating planes within a short time. That feature alone has reduced fuel consumption and thus CO2 emissions mm. for us. So it's very clear to see the impact on sustainability objectives. But for orgs that are transforming, does sustainability go hand in hand with other desired business outcomes? It might be things like cost cutting, maybe operational efficiency or reimagining the, the customer experience. I mean, Stephanie, seeing as probably a number of us used your services to maybe arrive in Munich today, let's start with you on this one. Mm -hmm. We've clearly seen uh, this with the project I just described, uh, the operations decision support suite. So yes, we are able to reuse emissions, but within the same time and within the very same projects, um, the optimization we have saved money as well. Yeah? So during the first three months, we already saw a savings of 1.5 million euros. And this was just from optimizing 50% of the routes of just one of our companies, uh, meaning Swiss. So we expect the overall savings from the project will be very significant for Lufthansa, also in the more or less non-digital world. Examples which show the coexistence of cost cutting, sustainability increase and more customer comfort are easy to get. Mm -hmm. Look at new aircraft, save up to 30% fuel and thereby emissions. They lower costs per seat and increase comfort customer comfort at the very same time. So by reducing emissions and also noise pollution, call it as you want, is win-win-win. Yes, across a number of variables, win-win-win, I like that. Mm -hmm. And Neil, for your customers, a broader set of customers, of course, given your customer base, is data that drives sustainability also clearly driving other business outcomes? Yes, absolutely. Um, our customers tell us that's exactly what's happening. Um, one of the customers, for example, is Deutsche Bahn Regio, the largest bus company in, in Germany with over 5,000 buses connected to the Geotab platform. By harnessing data insights, they make sure that the vehicles are available for drivers on time and ready to go. They have a state of charge, evaluation reports on energy consumption, and they're using Geotab data for immediate feedback to their drivers. This feedback helps the drivers con correct behavior like heavy braking. Mm -hmm. Some of the outcomes reported include higher driver satisfaction, which is good, 40% reduction in idling time, and savings of over 1,400 tons of CO2, a substantial reduction in fuel costs as well, and higher customer satisfaction. So absolutely, by leveraging data insights, customers are bene benefiting from this transformative change. So, First of all, thank you both for being here. And I think it's wonderful to see the cases of sustainability in both your organizations pairing beautifully with you know, operational efficiency, cost savings, and creating wonderful customer experiences. Please join me in thanking both Stephanie and Neil for joining us today. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Great everybody. to see you both. Thank, thank you, Adair. Thanks. Thanks. That conversation leaves me truly optimistic about what's to come. And it's all part of our overall goal, to help you make the sustainable choice, the easy choice for everyone, in life, in work, 
and in the cloud. So I'd like to close by thanking all of our guests for illustrating what true transformation looked like today in the cloud and possibly for tomorrow. You, our very valued customers, bring the possible to life and you inspire us each and every day to deliver the technology, the tools and the solutions that drive value creation in the cloud. No matter what your circumstances are or where you are on your journey, we will help you to better understand your data, help you to apply technology so you can lead in your industry, help you to ensure that your systems, your people, your users are safe and secure. We'll help you to create the best workplace for your employees, and we will help you to drive sustainability in your operations. So let me thank you once again for placing your trust in Google Cloud. Google is investing for the future, and we are here to help, whatever comes next. Thank you.